All right. Our lesson today is lesson number five. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream. And our, our memory verse is, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understandings. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he, he shall direct thy paths. You know, as I was studying the lesson, I kind of kept that memory verse in my mind. And as I thought about Joseph and uh, from, from when he was little bitty and back had his coat of many colors and everything and had his dreams and then was sold away, I often thought this is exactly what Joseph did. He trusted in the Lord. He didn't lean to his own understandings. And in all, in all thy ways acknowledge him. That's what he did. In all, his, in all the ways that wherever he went, he acknowledged God and God directed his paths. And I thought that, that fits so well. Proverbs was, was uh, uh, where that verse is, but that fit Joseph so, so much that uh, I thought, you know, Joseph already did that. And I don't think that verse was written then, then yet because I think Joseph came before uh, David or, or Solomon or whoever wrote this. And so, yeah, long, long time before. But Joseph had a relationship with God. And, and he had to have had a relationship with God. If you're in doubt whether he did, just, just watch how he lived. And, uh, and he, he always put God first. And, uh, and where did he learn that from? He learned it from his, from his father and from his grandfather probably is where he learned it from. But you know, he, he always kept God in the forefront of his mind. Emphasis. I'm going to read that at all emphasis there. Pharaoh had a twofold dream and his spirit was troubled. No one could be found to interpret his dream. Then the butler remembered Joseph in the prison and told Pharaoh. Joseph told Pharaoh the dream came from God to warn him of the coming famine or drought that would consume the land. Pharaoh put Joseph in full charge of storing crops in preparation for the lean years. Step by step, God led Joseph. Hey, do you see that? Now, you know, we're up to a point where it looked like God might have forgot him. You know, I mean, Joseph probably, probably thought, boy, has the Lord forgot me? I think he kind of thought like Joseph, or Job did. I don't know where God is, but God knows where I'm at. And I think that's kind of what he, 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 was, he, he, he was looking at. But he says, step by step, God led Joseph. He was working, God, he's talking about, was working out God's plan. And uh, so, so, you know, as things happen to us, uh, and, you know, how many times have we had something happen and we intend to get away at a certain time and something happens and we get away a little later and especially myself, I think men maybe have more problem with it than women do, but, you know, you think, well, we're going to be late. We're going to be late. Well, you know, you just kind of have to take it and say, well, Lord, for some reason, we're running late, but you know, maybe, maybe, and possibility, you could be keeping us from being in an accident or something to that effect, you know. And and so as we as we live, just the, even the little things that happen to us, you know, we need to take them in stride and not get all worked up about it. I'm saying that to myself because I. I kind of have a tendency to do that, but, but you know, take them in stride. God knows where we're at. We may not know where God's at, but we, we, uh, He knows where we're at, and He's, he's leading and guiding us. 
Okay, we're going to read here, and it's going to be a lengthy reading here. Uh, Genesis 41 and 1, and we're going to read here a, a ways. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine, and fat-fleshed, and, fl fat -fleshed, and they fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and uh, lean-fleshed kind did, did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon the stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the east wind, sprang up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And uh, uh, Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto uh, Pharaoh, saying, and this is what the chief butler is saying for the next two or three, uh, two or three uh, uh, verses here. Pharaoh, uh, I, here's what he said. I do remember my faults this day. Do you remember? Joseph said, remember me down here in prison when you get restored back to your butlership. And for two years, the butler had forgot all about him. He got busy. He got busy with taking care of the king and making sure everything was just right so he wouldn't wind up back in the prison, probably is what he was thinking about. But the time came when it, God brought it back to his mind, and he says, I remember my thoughts this day. He goes on and tells Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh was wrought with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream, and one night I and he... We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew, servant to the uh, captain of the guard. And he told him, and, and, he, uh, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream, he did interpret it. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was, me... He restored unto my office, and him he hanged, hanged. And he could have just said, that's exactly what Joseph predicted or interpreted our dreams to be. And that's, that's what it was. Well, that got Pharaoh's mind thinking. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him tastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his garment and came unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard, I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. What did Joseph say? Oh, yeah, I can do that. No, Joseph answered, Pharaoh said, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. It's not me. He's pointing back to God, and he's making sure that God gets the glory for that. He says it's God that does that. I'm going to go ahead and read uh, 17. It's not in your cordly there, 17 through 24. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in the metal, and meta. And, be, and behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill-favored, and lean flesh, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind 
did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as the beginning. So I awoke, and I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and, uh, and good. And behold, seven ears withered thin and blasted with the east wind sprang up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but they were, none of them could declare it to me. All right, that's verse 24 there. Okay, the lengthy reading, I know, and hopefully I didn't uh, uh, bore you with the reading. But you know, this is what the story was that was in Pharaoh's mind. He had two stories, one with cows, one with the ears of corn. And that's, that's, that's what he had. Two dreams there. Two years went by after Joseph told the butler and the baker that their uh, dreams meant. And then Pharaoh had a dream. That was two years later. He dreamed that seven good fat cattle came up out of the river. Then seven poor, thin, very thin cattle came up and ate up the fat ones. Pharaoh awoke. Then he went to sleep again and dreamed that seven good, big, full ears of corn grew on one stalk. Can you imagine seven ears of corn on one stalk? You know, farmer would love to see that. You know, sometimes you get, a lot of times you'll get two ears on a stalk, and a lot of times maybe a third ear, but a lot of times the third ear is usually a little small nubbin. That's what we always called them, you know, but seven, seven of them, you know. And, uh, but that's, that's, that's the way it was going to be. That's, 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 what, uh, that's what it was going to be there. And uh, uh, on one stuck, and then seven poor, thin, blasted ears sprang up and swallowed the full ears. Uh, you know, that put Pharaoh's mind to thinking, what can this be? You know, what, what caused me to dream this? But it impressed on his mind. I think God impressed on his mind so much that this has got a meaning to it. This has got a meaning. Well, what does he do? He turns to his magicians and he turns to, to the wise men and they couldn't, God, God blanked that out of their minds on what, what it could, could be. But then finally the butler remembers, oh yeah, there's a little guy down there in the, in the prison that told me, and told the baker what was going to happen to our, uh, when we had our dream. And the thing of it is that impressed the baker or the butler so much, it actually come true the way Joseph said. And so that really what caught his, his eye then. When Pharaoh awoke, he was troubled. He called all the wise men, asked him what his dream meant. They could not tell. The butler remembered. Then the butler thought of Joseph. He says, I do remember my thought faults. I do remember my faults. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's, that was brought back to him. Yes, he had forgotten to tell Pharaoh about Joseph, as Joseph had asked. Now he told him how Joseph had interpreted his dream and the baker's, and they came true. Therefore, Pharaoh sent to the prison for Joseph. All right, well, that may be my last resort, maybe, maybe Pharaoh thought. Well, okay, he, he predicted those dreams, he interpreted them dreams. Let's bring them up, it won't do no harm. And let's see what happens. And so that's what they did. Had it seemed to Joseph that God had forgotten him? Had it seemed to Joseph that God had forgotten him. The answer uh, that the, the, the uh, commentator said was no. But, you know, I kind of wonder if Joseph thought, I don't know why I'm in here. Maybe he always thought God and always knew that God knew where he was. And, of course, that's what I've led out with at first is God knows where we are. We may not know why the plan is going the way it is. That's probably a more, more, more than to really say 
had God, did Joseph think that God had forgotten him? That's probably true. No, he probably did not think that God had forgotten him, but he didn't know where the plan was leading. How many times do we know where the plan is leading from one time to the next? You know, we, we not always know. God doesn't always show us everything that's going to happen. And so, you know, we only, the, the thing that we need to be is following God whithersoever He leadeth. That's what's most important. God's plan was working. Je Joseph shaved and cleaned himself up and went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, I have heard thou canst understand a dream. Joseph said, no, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Joseph gave God the glory just right off the bat. Right off the bat, he gave God the glory. No, it's not me, but it's God. Well, you know, I don't think Pharaoh and the Egyptians served the same God that he served, but... He just made an understanding that it's my God is the one that is going to interpret this dream. This was right. We can do nothing of ourselves. You know, I think there's a verse, I can do nothing uh, of myself except God be with me or something to that effect, you know. Uh, that's in the New Testament. But it still rings true today. It's still the same today. Joseph couldn't do anything without God. He gave God all the glory. We, in the new dispensation of time, we can't do anything of our own. It has to be God. We're in the same, same boat with, with Joseph. That we can't do anything. Only God can work through us. And that's one thing we can be thankful for, that God can use us and can can help us to understand and can entrust us with the gospel and, and, and be able to go out and work following God's footsteps and doing what God tells us, but being able to go out and spread the gospel. And that's, that's what's most important. We can do nothing of ourselves. God is the one who does things through us. Pharaoh told Joseph his dreams. Okay, let's go to verse 25 there. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. God showed Pharaoh what God is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good years are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind uh, that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showed unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, God has bringing it out to you, is what he's saying. He's warning us. He's warning you, is what he's doing. And you know, God's merciful for each one of us to warn us. You know, when we're, when we're unsaved, he speaks to us. He, uh, he puts us under conviction. The Holy Spirit puts us under conviction, which at the time, yes, it may not seem like a good thing, but... Uh, but you know, you look back and you think that's the greatest thing that ever happened to you is to be put under conviction and brought to uh, the gospel of God. Well, this he was being he's being merciful to to uh, Pharaoh. This is the thing which I have spoken to you, Pharaoh. What God is about to do to show unto Pharaoh, verse twenty nine. Behold, there comes seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. And then shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the fan, fan, phantom uh, drought shall consume the land. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 
31 and 32. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. Now he's, he's telling him. He's not trying to scare him. He's only telling him what God is telling him. And that's what he's doing. And for the dream was doubled unto thee, Pharaoh, twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now that's what, that's what uh, uh, Joseph is telling him, that it was doubled to you. It was to make sure that you got uh, uh, paid attention. You know, sometimes we have to be told you know, more than once, you know. Now, God's only required to tell us once. But, you know, sometimes, and more than likely, God's going to tell us more than once. But, you know, the quicker the better that we follow God, that's the most and the best way to go. Joseph interprets the dream. God helped Joseph, and Joseph told the meaning of the dream. He said the two dreams meant the same. The seven good cattle and the seven good ears were seven years of plenty. Then much food would grow in Egypt. In other words, they knew that seven years was going to be a, a, a time of plenty. But remember, seven good years, what comes after that? The seven bad years. So we better get prepared. God, God warns us of this. God didn't just let us go through the seven good years and then all of a sudden say, okay, now you're going to have seven bad years. You no, know, he had it so that they could be prepared for that. The seven good cattle and the seven good years were seven years of plenty. Then much food would grow in Egypt. After them would follow seven years of fam phantom. The seven thin cattle and seven empty years meant seven years when no food would grow. God sent two dreams because the thing is established by God. And that's what, that's what was uh, uh, in verse 32. It's not uh, in your uh, cordly there, but that's, that's part of the Bible. And he, like he said, it was established by God. Moreover, it would come soon. The famine would be so serious that all the plenty shall be forgotten. That all the plenty. And so, okay, now Pharaoh and the, 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 his cabinet members and everything now is had a warning. What are they going to do about that warning? You know, it's kind of like us, you know, when, we're, when we were called uh, uh, to come to the Lord and to repent of our sin. What are we going to do now? You know, now the, the, the ball, so to speak, the ball's in your court now. What are you going to do? You know, God done his part. What are you going to do? Okay, let's read verse 33 there and see what happened. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him, this is, this is uh, Joseph talking here, and uh, he's saying let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of, of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. A fifth part. Well, what's a fifth part? 20%. 20%. That's what he's, what he's taking. He's, he, he's, the people's going to grow this land or grow this uh, crops and everything. They're going to bring a fifth of it or they're going to bring 20% to us. And then they, they live off the, the other 80% uh, of it for that year. Then they'll plant next year, bring another 20% to us. Well, you know, at, at the end of seven years, you've got 140%. You know, of what people had, had, had grown. So, you know, that's a pretty good, pretty good bunch then. Yeah. And let them gather all the food of those good years and come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be uh, for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt. 
and the land perished not through the famine. Okay, God is getting them prepared. God is getting them prepared. Joseph put in wisely the, what his uh, opinion to do. And, you know, I think as we read it, I think uh, Pharaoh kind of kind of agreed with Joseph on that, very much so. Now, if we will stop and look back when he was in Potiphar's house, he was over Potiphar's house, a smaller thing than what this is, but he done well in Potiphar's house. Potiphar was well pleased with him until he was falsely accused, and then that's how he wound up in prison. But Potiphar was very pleased with the way Joseph ran his business. And, you know, I think Potiphar probably mentioned to jo or to Pharaoh that, yes, I've had him, I know what he's like, and, and he's very good with, with commerce, with uh, economical, economics and things like that. So, Joseph's advice... Joseph said, Let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise. This man would save food in the good years. Then they would have food in the seven years of famine. Verse 37, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is. Can we find a cabinet member? We need to appoint a cabinet member, uh, a vice president or, or a secretary of commerce or something to that effect. Now, I know that's not probably what they called it, but, you know, we can understand it in... Uh, in America as that, you know, we need to find a person that, that is capable of doing this. You know, well, it's just, like, it's just like in the banking business, which Brother Bayless is very familiar with banking, and he can probably tell more so than I am. You don't hire somebody off the street to be the CEO of a bank or of a, of a financial institution. You don't hire them just right off the street. They've got to know how to run a business. And that's the same way with any kind of a business. They've got to know how to run. And where do you start? It's usually down and toward the bottom. If not clear at the bottom, you know. And work your way up. Understanding how the business works. Understanding. Well, you know, that's kind of what Joseph did. He started at, at um, keeping sheep for his father. Then he worked up and worked with uh, uh, Potiphar. And then he was in the prison there, worked in there. You know, he was real well respected of in the prison. Worked on up. Now here, here he is then. And Joseph, in Pharaoh, in verse 39 there, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Let this not go to your head. You know, we have to, we have to think the same thing. Joseph, don't let this go to your head. Don't get the big head, so to speak. Okay, let's read on and see what happens. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all the people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Oh, man, that's, you know, that's, that's really getting put up there. Watch it. Don't, don't let your head get too big. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Okay, there's another chance that he could get the big head there. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him, arrayed him in vesters of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Okay, the ring. I think uh, what, what they're talking about is a seal that Pharaoh had, you know, and he give that. Okay, that, that can make your head swell too, you know. But 
Did Joseph do that? Well, let's read on. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Again, you know, some people would let that go to their head until their head popped. You know what? They really, they really would. But Joseph always kept God in mind. And, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am, this is what Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. In other words, you are protected. You are protected. You, we're, you're going to be second in command, so to speak. A little Hebrew boy, think about that. And you know, I think that's kind of what, what uh, uh, Joseph kept thinking. Here I am from a strange land, little Hebrew boy, and now he's putting, he's entrusting me with all this. And you know, why is he entrusting me with all this? It's all stemming back to God's will. And now he's starting to see how it all stems back to God's will. Yet he don't, he, he don't know that his brothers are going to be coming down to him yet. But you know, it's all stemming back. And, and he's starting to get the better end of the stick is what he's starting to get there. Okay, I'm going to have Brother Bayless help me with some words here. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name... Zaphaphania, and he gave him the wife Asenath, the daughter of, help me out, Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Thank you very much for helping me out. I hope I didn't chop that up so that you couldn't understand it at all, but that's in verse 45 if you want to look at it there. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before uh, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh. And what did he do? And he went throughout all the land of Egypt. He got to work right away. You know, he had all the means. He had the clothes. He had the ring. He had the chariot. He had all the means. And what does he do? He immediately goes to work then. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by hands full. You know, that's what, that's what a farmer strives for is hands full, you know. Uh, you know, and a lot of things can happen from the time, planting time to harvest time. There is so many things that can happen. I, um, I talked to my brother-in-law just recently and he said that uh, corn crop was fairly well. Uh, you know, it has done better other years but he says 15 miles from me it done worse on both sides or pretty much on three sides of him 15 miles from him now up up north of him it done a little better even you know but you know what god gives us is what god intends for us to have and so, you know, you have to kind of take it that away. What God gives us, God intends for us that to have. And uh, I was talking to my cousin, and he, he's about, he was about 15 miles from uh, uh, my brother-in-law. And I asked him how the corn crop good, did, and he said, not good, he said. He said, and it was more than half cut, you know, from one to the other. And so, you know... But you know, here, here in, in verse 47, them seven plentiful years brought forth bunches or handfuls, you know. Well, God said that's what was going to happen. God told Joseph, this is what's going to happen. We need to get prepared for this, using this, to prepare for the years to come. For, this is going to take 14 years. This is seven good years and seven bad years. What's seven and seven? You know, when I was going to school, it was 14 years, you know. So 
you know, this was, this was a, 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 a decade and a half, you know. So, so, you know, let's get prepared for it. And, you know, as we live our Christian life, we need to be prepared for things like this. You know, I, I've heard somebody say that in the, in the time, time of peace, prepare for war. And I've not found that in the Bible. But, you know, there is times when we need to be prepared because we know that not always are we always, always, always going to have good times, you know. There's going to be some lean times come. That happens to Christians. That happens to unchristians, you know. So we know that. And, but, you know, we need to know, we need to be persuaded uh, on, uh, what's that verse that you just read Wednesday night? Persuaded and, and know what we have entrusted God with or put our trust in. That's, that's what, I think that's in First Timothy, I believe is where it is. But we need to know who we put our trust in. And that, you know, as, as long as we put our trust in God, we, should, we, don't, have, we don't have problems. Yes, we're, well, I won't say we won't have problems. We got someone to turn to. We got someone to turn to. Yes, we're going to have problems. We're going to have uh, 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 disappointments. And you know, we're even going to have temptation. You know, we're going to have that. But you know we have someone we can turn to, and that's, that's what's most important. Okay, Joseph made ruler. I kind of got off a little bit there. So Joseph made ruler. Joseph, Pharaoh liked Joseph's interpretation and advice that he had mentioned. He said no one was more discreet and wise than Joseph. The Spirit of God was in Joseph. You know, I think, I know that God had something to do with Pharaoh's heart and mind to appoint Joseph as the overseer of that. You know, God uses people, whether they're Christians or not Christians. And I don't think, I don't think Pharaoh was a Christian. I don't, I don't, I don't, don't seem to be anyway. But anyway, God used him. Nebuchadnezzar, look how God used him. God uses people. You know, I want to be used but for God rather than used just to, just to uh, 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 fulfill what God has, but to be on God's side. It's kind of like, kind of like the, uh, 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 the uh, ark that Noah built, you know. I'd rather be on the inside looking out than on the outside looking in. And you know, that's, that's, that's a Christian life. We want to be on the inside looking out rather than on the inside or outside looking in. This, the Spirit of God was with Joseph. So Pharaoh chose Joseph to be ruler over all the land of Egypt. He gave him his ring, fine clothes, jewelry, and, and, a, and a chariot. He told the people to honor Joseph. He gave him a wife. Let's go into verse 48 there and see what we come up with. And he gathered, this is Joseph, he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field which was round about every city laid he up in the same. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. Wow. Things was going good. And, and Joseph knew that when day or when year four came along, we got three more years. When year six come along, next year's going to be the last year of it. Year seven come along, okay, this is going to be it. Joseph already knew that. And he's getting prepared for it. And Joseph gathered the corn, verse 49, and Joseph gathered corn as the sea, sand of the sea very much 
until he left number, it was without number. And then two Joseph were born, two sons, before the uh, years of famine came. So during that seven years, he had two children, um, which Aeneath, the daughter of Potipharoth, a priest of On, bared unto him. Thank you again. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manassas. For God said he, for God said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteous that was in the land of Egypt were ended. Okay, that's it. What you got stored up, that's what you're going to have to live off of next seven years. Joseph, Joseph knew that. How many farmers went out and planted that next year? Knowing farmers, they did. They went and planted, you know, some of them did. Probably some of them were uh, maybe thought, well, okay, that's probably true. But some of them probably didn't. Don't you remember when God told Moses when the manna came, only, only pick up one day's worth, and that's it. But then the day before the Sabbath, pick up two days' worth. How many people picked up two days' worth? Well, let's back it up. How many people picked up two days' worth when they was only supposed to pick up one? A lot of them did. And what happened? It stinked, didn't it? It, was, it rotted overnight. It is stinking. <laughs> Can you imagine? It probably stinked up the whole house, you know, or the whole tent that they were living in. And then it came the day before the Sabbath day, and some of them just picked up one day probably. Well, they probably got hungry before the Sabbath day was over, you know. So, you know. People always have a tendency to do their own thing. Every time people have a tendency to want to do their own thing. And here it doesn't say that farmers planted that eighth year, but I can imagine that there was probably some that did. Now that's my thoughts. You can take it or leave it. But that's, that's, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Just in case Joseph made a mistake. Yeah, uh huh. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that out. Joseph's dream, Pharaoh's dream comes true. Joseph began his work. He was 30 years old. Remember when he was back in uh, 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 with his father? He started out, it was 17 years, I believe, is what he was. Now he's 30. So. What is that? That's, that's 13 years, isn't it? 13 years. He was 30 years old. The seven years of plenty came. Much food grew. Joseph gathered up the extra food. And that's, that's, what, that's what he suggested that Pharaoh do. Get somebody that's discreet, that's honest, that knows what they're doing, and appoint that person. Pharaoh says, you're the person then. So, okay. Let's go to verse 54. In the seven years of drought, I'm going to call that drought. I know that's not what it is. Dearth, I think, but uh, it's drought. Began to come according as Joseph had said, and the drought was in all lands. But in the land of Egypt, there was bread. There was bread. I'm going to go ahead and read verse 55 and 56. And when all the land of Egypt was fam famished, the, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he says to you, do it. And it says do, but I'm going to add a, add a word to it, do it. Whatever he says to do, you do. That's what he said. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph started 
opening up all the store uh, uh, houses. It says, And Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold them to the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. He started opening them up because, hey, we're in the land, we're in the seven years of bad now. Joseph knew that. Verse 57, and all the countries, that's back in your uh, book there, and, and all countries came unto Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn because that the famine was so sore in all the land. It wasn't only Egypt that the drought hit. It started hitting everywhere. Do you think that uh, the uh, other, other lands that the crops produced very well? We don't know. We don't know for sure. But anyway, we know that there was a drought and that covered a big area. And people was running out of food. Well, when people run out of food, they start looking to see where they can get some food. You know, you know, here in about an hour or a couple hours from now, I'm going to think I need some food, you know, and I'm going to start looking for some food, you know. You know, that's the tendency. You get hungry, you start looking for food, you know. Well, you know, in our Christian life, when we get hungry for the things of God, and we, we need to start looking for food. We need to start uh, getting in our Bible. That's a good place to start. Start Having communion with God. Uh, having a relationship with God. And so on and so forth. Then the years of famine began. Joseph sold food to the people. The famine was in all countries too. Those people also came to buy food. Other countries came. Oh, I hear there's food down there in Egypt. Uh, they stored up uh, food down there, and there's food down there. Well, well, we'll go down there and get some then. Pharaoh dreams. Pharaoh's dream had come true in the way that Joseph said it would. Because it came true, we know that God sent the dream and the interpretation. Joseph, Joseph, a type of Christ. Joseph, one, uh, 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 number one view of that was 30 years old when he began his work. Jesus was 30 years old when he began his work. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Have you ever thought of that? You know, 30 years old. And Jesus was 30 years old. Number two, Joseph's work was to save physical life or the life of, of, uh, of bodies. He was to save physical life. Jesus' work was to save spiritual life or the life of souls. Did you ever think of that? Did you ever think of Joseph being a type of Christ? Maybe you, maybe you had thought of that, you know. But you know, that is, that is a good, good, good thought there. Joseph was sent by God for a purpose. Jesus was sent by God for a purpose. Aren't you glad that Jesus followed through? Aren't you glad that Jesus kept his eyes on God just like Joseph kept his eyes on God? You know, his brothers are going to be tickled to death that he kept his eyes on God. He really is. All right, let's look at the memory verse here. Let's go back and look at the memory verse. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. Did Joseph do that? Did, jo did Joseph trust in God with all of his heart? I believe he did. I believe he did. Did he lean not unto his own understanding? He always told when they told, told the interpretation of the dream that it wasn't him that was interpreting, but it was God. So he was always pointing to God. In all thy ways acknowledge him. That's exactly what Joseph did. In all these ways, he acknowledged God. And God was faithful to direct Joseph's paths then. Joseph, uh, for two more years, Joseph was in the prison. We're going to kind of sum it up here. Um, for two more years, Joseph was in prison. Then Pharaoh dreamed 
The butler told him of Joseph, told Pharaoh of Joseph. He sent for Joseph, asked for the meaning of the dream. God helped Joseph. He told Pharaoh that his dream of cattle and corn meant there would be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Pharaoh made Joseph ruler to gather food during the good years to use in the poor years. God had been working all the time to bring good to Joseph. You know, he's working all the time to bring good to us too. He really is, you know. We just need to open our eyes and see the good. Do you, you, have, a, do you have a relationship with God? Well, that's one good thing. Do you enjoy being who you are, what you are because of Christ? Well, that's another thing. You know, we have a lot to be thankful for. Now the good was beginning to come. If Joseph had sinned, God would not have helped him in this way. Just think, if he'd had a, a relationship with Potiphar's wife, you know, where would that have wound up? He might have even, they, he might have, they might have even took his life. You know, very, very, very much could have. The butler probably meant to present Joseph's case to Pharaoh, but he forgot. The outcome of, uh, of, the outcome of God's plan for Joseph is not yet apparent, but all these happenings are shaping to bring it to pass. The dreams of Joseph's interpretation of them the dreams and Joseph's interpretation of them are, are, was, are necessary to God's purpose. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see that as we, as we go on into other lessons. He was, and then let's go back to uh, uh, the butler. He was so absorbed in his own affairs that another's trouble did not impress him deeply. Think of that. Do we get absorbed in our affairs that we forget one another? We need to, we need to uh, keep other people in mind. You know, that's when God's love really pours out of our heart, is when we can think of other people. Maybe we're having a trial or a temptation, but we're thinking of other people. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's hard to do. It's not, you can't do it on your own. You have to have the love of God. And that's, that's very important that we don't get wrapped up in ourself. You know, and that's, that's easy to do, to get wrapped up in yourself and poor me and all this kind of stuff. God don't want that kind of a person. God does not want that per kind of person. Gratitude is a necessary virtue in the making of a complete Christian character. Gratitude is thankfulness joined with a desire to benefit those who have benefited us. Our gratitude is due first to God and to all those who live, whose lives has touched ours in blessing. And you know, that's, that's, that's very much true. Gratitude comes not by trying. You can't work it up. You, you, know, you, do, you know, a real, oh yeah, it might sound like gratitude, but it's a false gratitude. It only comes from God. No, the love of God in the heart makes gratitude a natural feeling. And you know, we have to have God in our heart to be able to show a natural gratitude toward people. And then the thoughts, then the thought and the will join in gratitude's fulfillment. And so it's very much, very much so. Now, what have I forgot to do? Let's go to our theme. I never brought that out at first there. Let's go to our theme. Don't be afraid to trust an unknown future to an all-knowing God. I told you I'd, I'd, I'd try and read that each, each Sunday. So, so, but we can just keep that in the back of our mind at all times. Amen.